I think that mm-hmm. that 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 uh, uh, as a measure it it, it allows basically uh, more foreign ownership, and uh, we have to make the system more competitive. We have to make sure that the consumers in Malaysia get the best uh, possible products. And uh, in that sense, uh, it is also not a zero-sum game. It doesn't mean that we allow the foreigners to come and own greater amount. The, the locals will lose out. The locals will, 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 will certainly uh, face this competition, merge among themselves perhaps, and, and take action to innovate themselves so that the system as a whole becomes more competitive, uh, more innovative. I think time, enough time has been given to the local players uh, to, mm. to strengthen, to build up a base, to build up the capacity. And uh, now is the time to open up the system and to let fresh ideas and fresh mm. products uh, come into the system. Work in progress but the outlying features are coming out quite well. And uh, there's also a, a, the Prime Minister has appointed Tansi Ami Shah as the Chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors with the focus on the new economic model. And, and, uh, and uh, the new economic model has m- various building blocks. And today's announcement, I think, is a major building block in that uh, new economic model. The whole objective basically is to look at uh, our uh, model over the last 40, 50 years or so, but certainly from 1970s and 1980s. We have done very well based on the economic model that we had. And what was that model? That model, uh, on, on, on the one hand, emphasized uh, the low cost regime that we had. Wages were low, cost was low. So we attracted uh, investors to come in, mainly in manufacturing, assembly lines, and that created jobs for plenty of our rural people. Uh, and uh, that, was, that was good. And that was part of the process of getting ourselves out of poverty, uh, almost uh, reducing poverty from 49% in 70 to less than 4% now, creating that group of professionals, and uh, and uh, and uh, moving forward to become a middle-income country. At the same time, we also uh, became a major exporter in, in not only commodities but even in uh, uh, electronic, electrical, uh, air conditioners. At one time, we were number one in the world. Uh, that was very good. But moving forward, is that the right model? The answer is certainly no, because. Uh, this, we are living in a world where it is knowledge economy and uh, to be an assembly plan for the world uh, with a low cost base doesn't really help. We need to have uh, more Malaysians earning a larger income, a product with high productivity, less dependent on export. Uh, domestic consumption should become a major uh, source of economic growth. We just have to move there to survive and prosper. Uh, that much has been agreed, uh, and that we should be knowledge economy, uh, and we should have uh, I- I- innovative uh, products and creativity, and much more value added, less dependent on exports. The question is, how do we get there? Uh, that is the work in process that's going on. But there, I- there is no silver bullet for that. It's just a matter of uh, building blocks logically and uh, with the right sequencing. Uh, to, to get there, to market pricing, uh, how do we handle uh, various subsidies, control prices. There's a whole uh, menu that's involved and uh, of course one has to implement them over a period of time. Uh, something big and expecting liberalisation and I don't think the market will be disappointed. Oh, that's good. Um, that's good. This is so I'm just wondering, as a stockbroker, when you see your clients and on the back of these measures, what sector do you like? What sector will you be recommending to them? Well, I think the, the obvious beneficiary is the capital markets uh, in the long term. And then you look... Yeah, uh, I mean like um, the property sector, the bank... No, uh, I think capital markets, and you look at the, the main capital market players, and the number one player remains CIMB. Um, I see. Do you see and any therefore, Boomi Commerce. Okay. Do you see an influx of foreigners coming to invest on the back of these measures? Uh, not 
you know, overnight. Uh, but this, yeah, to use Town Street's term, it's an important building block for the future. It, this is this is catch up. I see. So we should be overweight on Malaysia at this moment. Uh, as a house, Credit Suisse remains underweight Malaysia, uh, due primarily to valuation grounds. It must not be forgotten uh, that Malaysia outperformed uh, most markets last year, um, and therefore starting from a very high base, it's only natural uh, Malaysia should underperform this year. It should also be noted uh, that Malaysia's banking system is somewhat unique around the world for having handled or, or not even having to be in a position to handle the current uh, credit crunch. I see. Uh, and that is one of the reasons Malaysian market outperformed last year. Okay. Our Malaysian property is 90% cheaper than our neighbours. So with these liberalisation measures, do you see more people buying our property? I, I think uh, Malaysia needs to make proper friends with Singapore first. <laughs> and maybe that's uh, what will be announced tomorrow. Um, uh, but once you have yeah, free flow of goods and information, uh, sorry, go goods and people uh, between uh, Malaysia and Singapore, specifically IDR, uh, that will really help. Unemployment has never been a major problem for us. Of course, during the last couple of months, perhaps there was some additional unemployment. What is uh, needed is the quality of employment and we need to move people from simple assembly line work uh, to uh, higher quality knowledge workers that is a challenge and uh, we see that this move not so much in creating jobs in terms of numbers but in, in upgrading jobs in terms of quality We, we, we looked at the various um, instruments that we have in terms of distributive policies and we found that uh, PNB has done a very good job uh, in terms of uh, building uh, Bumi Belt, uh, concentrating on listed vehicles and somewhat playing a passive role. That's good. But we also found that uh, there is a space outside uh, PNB's focus which is the unlisted companies and in terms of numbers they are bigger and in terms of value they are also bigger than listed and in that particular area the boomies are quite weak 8% or so uh, and the non boomies are 92% we thought there's one area that we should really help we go for the country for us to concentrate our efforts on, on this area and also to get the, the best boomies uh, based on meritocracy to come and work in this uh, come work own shares in this uh, sector, uh, non-listed companies, and the government, uh, through this Equinas uh, mechanism, will help them. And in this is okay, uh, unlike FIT, because he doesn't impose a constraint on others, he just helps uh, the boomies uh, in the process. Medical uh, companies in medical tourism, educational tourism, education, uh, ICT, high growth, basically high growth, new growth areas, creative uh, industries. Uh, some criticism in terms of uh, GLC crowding out the private sector, and I think the PM addressed that in his speech and said that we don't want to crowd the GLC, you know, to the the, the private sector. I mean, like. Uh, do you think there are some need, some changes need to be made uh, with respect to GLCs? They, I, I believe that? that we the GLCs have not in any major way mm -hmm. uh, crowded out uh, anyone else. But if, if there has been a little bit of crowding out, even mm -hmm. we want to make sure that it doesn't happen. The intention of GLC is never to crowd out uh, mm -hmm. any the, the private sector, uh, and so the PM made that point that if there are non-core sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, non-core areas in DLCs, they will be uh, disposed of uh, so the private sector can do it. And the government uh, in, in, in wants to make sure that the DLCs themselves uh, run their companies well and uh, the government is not going to give mm -hmm. them any benefit uh, in the competition with the private sector. So that was a po policy uh, measure, that's a policy announcement by the PM. It's very clear, they have to earn their own lunch or breakfast. And uh, and uh, they have to be competitive on their own right.